Hey guys, so I'm finally back. I know it's been about eight years since my last video, but I really appreciate your patience. I'm a huge Nokia fan and I wanted to create this video as a tribute to all the people that worked on the amazing PureView technology that we all got to experience and love on different products. And also find out which phone is the most worthy holder of the PureView title. So I'll be giving you a quick brief about the different implementations of the technology and I'm going to be doing a comparison between four that I've chosen specifically. If all you care about is the image comparison, you can skip down to the link I'll be providing down below. So let's get straight into it. Nokia brought a lot of camera innovations into the smartphone world. Let's see if you can keep up. The N8 had a huge 12 megapixel sensor with Xenon flash. The N9 had a sensor capable of capturing 4x3 or 16x9 images with minimal resolution loss. The 808 PureView brought pixel oversampling, combining the details from a huge 41 megapixel sensor into a super detailed 5 megapixel image with lossless zoom. The 920 had the first optical image stabilization module in a smartphone. The 925 had the first 6 elements camera lens. The 1020 used pixel oversampling and shot oversampled and huge full resolution raw images simultaneously for future reframing. The 930 further refined the pixel oversampling technology with no camera bump. The 1520 had four microphones for superior audio recording. The 950 XL combined pixel oversampling with the ability to adjust HDR tuning and flash effects after the image is taken. And finally, the Nokia 9 combined images captured with five cameras for ultra detailed raw images and excellent dynamic range, as well as very advanced bokeh effects. I decided to go with these four because they were the most groundbreaking for their time and to see how the modern Nokia N9 compares with its ultimate predecessors from different eras. I'll start with the oldest, from 2012, the first Nokia PureView smartphone, the Nokia 808. It had a 41 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.4, xenon flash, and a neutral density filter, which is a rarity in smartphones. The sensor size was 1 over 1.2 inches. It uses this massive sensor to capture oversampled 5 or 8 megapixel images, combining up to 8 pixels into a super pixel. In theory, it should mean noise-free images with colors that are true to life. Thanks to the massive sensor, the phone also has lossless 3x zoom, essentially cropping 5 megapixel images from the 41 megapixel sensor. I really like the camera interface, as it allows plenty of customization options, such as adjusting saturation, sharpness, and contrast levels. You can also shoot full resolution images if you want. The phone also can shoot 1080p videos in 30 frames per second. The 808 PureView was so ahead of its time, and for the first time ever, its images could rival professional cameras in some limited situations. Moving on to its spiritual successor, the Lumia 1020 released in 2013. This phone also had a huge 41 megapixel sensor, but this time it's slightly smaller at 1 over 1.5 inches. It also had optical image stabilization and xenon flash. The 1020 also has a larger aperture at f2.2, and that combined with the OIS meant that it was a much more capable smartphone for capturing low light images. It still retained the same concept of capturing oversampled 5 megapixel images, combining 8 pixels into one. However, the phone also shot full resolution raw 38 megapixel images simultaneously. The benefit of this was allowing you to reframe the same shot even after capturing the image, as well as giving you the option to edit the raw images to your liking. The camera interface on the 1020 was a pioneer in giving you manual settings. Even the recently released Nokia phones have the same interface for the Pro mode. Despite the huge Oreo plate on the back, the design was very sleek and still one of my favorite Nokia designs. The last of the old PureView legacy, the Lumia 950 XL was released by Microsoft in 2015 after they acquired the Nokia phones division. It was fitted with a big 20 megapixel sensor with a size of 1 over 2.4 inches, optical image stabilization, triple LED flash, and a large f1.9 aperture. The 950 XL can capture 8 megapixel images that benefit from 2 times lossless zoom, or you could capture full resolution images in JPEG or RAW format. This was the first Lumia that benefited from modern software wizardry found on recent phones, such as advanced HDR and night mode. It took things a step further by offering rich capture, which stacks multiple images to create the perfect image or allowing you to adjust the level of high dynamic range after capturing the images. You can also capture images with flash on, then adjust how much flash effect you want in the image, 
which worked really well for balancing between dark backgrounds and bright subjects. For many fans, the 950 represents the best of PureView technology, despite the phone having a boring design and cheap feel compared to its legendary predecessors. And finally, back to our present time with the Nokia 9 PureView. Co-developed with Lite, the phone is equipped with 5 12 megapixel 1 over 2.9 inch sensors with an aperture of f1.8, dual LED flash, and a time of flight sensor for measuring depth. Three of the five sensors are monochrome sensors that can capture more light, and two can capture color. The phone combines all five sensors to capture a single image with details from all five, allowing the phone to capture up to 1200 focal planes for depth mapping, for superior bokeh effect, and the ability to refocus after taking the image. The cameras are also capable of capturing up to 12 stops of dynamic range. The other advantage of using this many sensors is capturing massive raw images with plenty of details which you can extract later using Lightroom. So how do these cameras stack up? Time for the photo comparison. For the photo comparison, I used auto mode on all phones except the Nokia 808 PureView, which required me to use night mode for certain situations to get the most comparable results. The 808 PureView still captures the cleanest, most realistic looking images in good light thanks to having the largest sensor and very natural processing, and the bokeh effect is real and beautiful. However, when it comes to dynamic range and low light, it falls short, mainly due to lacking intelligent software that most modern smartphones use. The interface has good options, but doesn't give the same granular controls such as shutter speed to get the best out of it, unfortunately. The 1020 captures excellent images with processing that is more widely accepted by consumers when it comes to contrast and saturation. However, its weak point is in lacking HDR features and the white balance is almost always adding an unwanted yellow tint to images. Its manual mode on the other hand is still excellent today and allows to take nice images in a much wider spectrum of situations compared to the 808. The Nokia 9 offers the most unique solution to bokeh and produces excellent images if you know how to use it. Its raw images have so much hidden detail and you can get the best dynamic range out of any given situation if you know what you're doing. Unfortunately, 
it's massively let down in auto mode, specifically in low light, where the phone simply chooses the worst possible settings and the low light images look terrible most of the time. This is very strange, considering a simple software tweak or using manual mode can easily fix this, making it competitive with modern day smartphones in low light. Its other major drawback is reliability. The camera software is one of the most unreliable, buggy softwares I've used on a phone, and that's without taking into consideration the processing times. Simply unacceptable in this time and age. I wouldn't recommend this phone unless you want to tweak raw images, otherwise the phone's potential is almost completely wasted. Those who want to tweak raw images will however be very happy with what it can do, and I fall into that camp. When it comes to just point and shoot potential, the Lumia 950 XL is still the best pure view smartphone in most situations when it comes to speed, exposure, reliability, and image quality in low light. I am so impressed with how well it holds up even against much newer hardware today. The ability to adjust HDR and flash effects after the image is taken is also fun and useful. The only weak point I can find is that newer phones have much easier to use night modes and more advanced HDR. But when it comes to image quality, the camera is easily at least three to four years ahead of its time. And it's a shame that we might never get a true successor. Every single one of these phones is to this day extremely capable of taking excellent images in the right hands. Each phone has a much higher potential than what is shown here, and I would highly recommend learning how to use manual settings to get the best out of them. So that's it from me. If you've liked this video, please share, like, and subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more retro Nokia reviews and comparisons, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching.